Okay, so I thought I'd do a video on Raspberry Pi for owners who have just got a Raspberry Pi or are thinking about just getting their first Raspberry Pi. Uh, and mine specifically is more about running games or operating systems on Raspberry Pi. There's loads of other things you can do. The maker side I don't really cover. Uh, but first of all, let's have a look at my channel. I've done over 500 videos on Raspberry Pi in this playlist, Everything Raspberry Pi. I've done 48 videos on just installing Windows on Raspberry Pi because it keeps changing, so always look at the latest version on that. Um, but also, if you wanted to install Android on Raspberry Pi, uh, if you just type in on my channel, uh, say Android and Pi, you can see there's various different videos in here, uh, and some of them will show you how to set up and install uh, and install the Google Play Store on Android as well. But I also cover Linux, I also cover all the retro systems as well, so Windows 95 on Raspberry Pi, Windows 98, Amiga, and loads, loads more. I also cover all the retro gaming side with RetroPie, Batacera, and Recallbox. So which Pies do I recommend you start off with? Well, it depends how much money you've got, really. Um, I mean, I particularly like the Pi 4, and uh, this is a 1 gig Pi 4, which I don't necessarily recommend. If you can get a 2 gig, the performance is definitely much better, and I've got 2 gigs in both of these. Uh, cases. I've got a Pi 4 4 gig, which I think is probably my favorite Pi for money and performance. Uh, this is another Pi 4 4 gig. Uh, I've also got two Pi 4 8 gigs. So the Pi 4 8 gig, I think, is the best model uh, for compatibility, for performance and everything else. But you do pay quite a lot more money for them, especially at the moment. Uh, now, if the budget is really tight, then, uh, you know, maybe go for uh, a one gig Pi 4, but you are going to find that running an operating system and certainly some game systems just aren't that good on it. Uh, the Pi Zero 2W is lower powered than a Pi 4 one gig and has half the RAM, but it is still a very impressive device for very little money. Uh, these are really quite inexpensive, but uh, at the moment a lot of people are finding that they can't find them for the $15 that they're supposed to be sold at. Um, but it's a brilliant system. Uh, it's a bit limited for running an operating system, but it is usable. But I would say probably for me, the two gig Pi or the four gig Pi are probably my favorites. There's a couple of old Pis here. This is an old Zero W, and uh, I can't even remember which one this one is. Uh, so it's from 2011, uh, and you can see it's got the old analog connection on it. But yeah, overall, I say Pi 4 4 gig is probably the best one for the money. But if you can afford it, get a Pi 4 8 gig. Uh, a notable mention to the Pi 400, which is 4 gig, similar performance to the Pi 4, but doesn't need any extra cooling, which is a nice thing about it. Uh, and obviously, you've got a keyboard in there, a really nice machine. So what about storage? Uh, it's very important in a Raspberry Pi what you store your data on, what you run your operating system from. Now the first one isn't really a serious proposition for an operating system. These are old style mechanical hard drives from laptops. You can use them, but they are slow and they consume quite a lot of power. I particularly like them for RetroPie builds. Uh, so if you're doing retro gaming, you can have loads and loads of games and ROMs on a physical hard drive and run the operating system for a reasonably fast SD card and it actually works really well. But let's move them away. Uh, at the main one, definitely, I would say everybody should have an SD card. Uh, an SD card uses very little power. Uh, they're really quite inexpensive compared to other storage mediums and they work really well, especially an A2 card. Uh, so, like the SanDisk Extreme Pro or the Kingston Canvas Go, uh, they're both really good. I've done loads of speed tests on SD cards. Uh, and you can run operating systems on pretty much all of them, but a faster card definitely feels nicer. Again, it depends what you're using it for, but the Brave Eagle and the Alert Seal has given particularly good performance for the money. The Raspberry Pi is an EMMC drive, which is supposed to be very good at retaining data. So if you're using an operating system for a very long time and you want to make sure that uh, it runs well and doesn't lose any data or anything over time, EMMC is supposed to be one of the best ways of doing that. I particularly like the Samsung bars. These are USB sticks, which are faster than most SD cards, um, but also just really handy and really well priced. Uh, but I suppose my favorite is probably an SSD drive. Now, SSD drives are pretty good for the money. Uh, they certainly offer very good speeds, much better than anything we've seen previously on here. Um, but uh, even better than that, you can go for an M.2 drive, or if you're even more ambitious, an NVMe drive, Although I think probably the cost isn't worth it in most cases. I think SSD performance for price is probably my favorite. 
And if you are going to go for an M.2 drive, I definitely recommend this Argon adapter. It works really, really well. But as you can see, my operating system at the moment is running from an SSD drive uh, with a USB SATA cable. Now the USB SATA cable, not everything is compatible. So check my videos to see which ones I recommend. Uh, the U green one is very good. There are some which cause all sorts of problems with booting and, uh, and definitely make it slower. But uh, yeah, if you get the right SATA cable with an SSD drive, you don't have to spend loads of money, but you will get very good performance. But for a main start off point, I would say probably a 64 gig card is what I would recommend for your main operating system. And I'm gonna to say to put Raspberry Pi OS on it, just as your standard operating system. You can use other operating systems from there, but if you keep that to keep it all up to date and uh, also have maximum compatibility with programs, and especially if you're gonna have the maker side of it. Um, but uh, as you've got a 64 gig one, I would also recommend maybe having a few 32 gig, but just more inexpensive SD cards. Um, so it just means that if you want to experiment with operating systems, you've got that bigger room to be able to download it, uh, but then you can transfer it over to a smaller card because the great thing about the Raspberry Pi is you can run multiple operating systems by just switching the storage medium out. So SD card, USB stick, SSD drive, anything you like, you just switch it, boot it up, and you're running something completely different. Now powering a Pi uh, is very easy on a Pi Zero 2W. I've done videos of me powering it with my television USB socket and it works incredibly well even with things plugged in. Um, so pretty much any mobile phone charger will power this. It uses micro USB which is an older connection. If you end up buying a separate power adapter for it, I would say always buy the Raspberry Pi 4 adapter. Now the thing about the Raspberry Pi 4 adapter it is USB-C but that is definitely the way everything is headed. So if you wanna get one of these, which is a little micro USB adapter to USB-C, I can pop that on the end, and then that will power the Pi Zero 2W. The Pi 4 is a bit different, and uh, it's a bit more fussy with power. Uh, if you've got a modern smartphone with USB-C or a tablet, you'd probably be all right to use that adapter, um, but uh, I would say, in most cases, try and buy the official Raspberry Pi 4 one. It definitely is better for most uses and provides enough power to have various different things plugged into it. You'll definitely get less trouble with the official adapter. Most people won't already have the right HDMI cable for a Pi 400, a Pi 4, or a Pi Zero 2W. Uh, the Zero 2W uses mini HDMI, so I recommend a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter because most people will have a standard HDMI cable somewhere. Uh, the Pi 4 uses two micro HDMI, uh, you only need to use one of those, uh, but micro HDMI to HDMI adapters are my favoured one, uh, again, because most people have already got an HDMI cable, uh, and here you go on the back of the Pi 400, it's the same as the Pi 4 for uh, video connection. You're going to need a mouse and keyboard to be able to control your Pi. Uh, I recommend the Logitech one, it comes with this dongle and it comes with a trackpad on it, and you can sit with it on your lap if you're using it through a TV, but it also works fine on a desktop. Now I've just booted up my Pi Zero 2W for the next bit, which is screen resolution, which makes a huge difference to performance. So I'm currently running at 1920 by 1080, but if you want the Pi Zero 2W to perform faster, uh, go into preferences and lower that screen resolution. Now any operating system you use will have a different way of doing this. So if I do screens, HDMI, resolution, I can drop it down to 1280 by 720 and hit the tick and click OK. You can see that it doesn't look quite as good uh, because it's running at a lower resolution, but video performance will be better, apps will run better, uh, games will be way, way better. I often run games uh, as low as 640 by 480 because retro games used to run at lower resolutions anyway. So changing that screen resolution makes a big difference to performance. Now the Pi 4 runs absolutely fine at 1080, although that said, if I'm running something like GameCube or something more intensive, uh, then I will drop it down to 720 on that as well. But the one that really slows down the Pi 4 is 4K. And loads of operating systems, if you start them for the first time, will start off in 4K resolution. And uh, it just, the performance is terrible on the Pi in 4K. Now, if you're running it for um, showing photos or something like that, it'll be fine. But for running an operating system, definitely don't use it. A little tip on the USB sockets on a Raspberry Pi 4. The maximum load you can have on there is 1.2 amp. So as you plug more and more things in, 
you need to be conscious of that because it can stop the operating system from running. So in the case of mine, my main operating system is Twister OS on the Raspberry Pi 4. I use it for pretty much everything. I run the operating system from an SSD drive in a USB 3 socket because you get better performance. USB 3 is definitely faster. Um, but if I wanted to write an operating system, I would actually end up plugging it into USB 2. Uh, and the reason I do that is because USB 2 by nature just uses less power. Um, so if I needed to move things around, I might end up plugging my little keyboard adapter into USB 3 because I know it takes very, very little power. But if I'm going to plug a drive in, especially one of those mechanical drives I showed earlier on, I'll definitely plug it into USB 2. Now the way to get over that is to get a powered USB hub. But I tend to just plug it into USB 2 because I'm often not in a hurry when I'm writing an operating system. I just let it do stuff in the background. Okay, so I've now switched over to my main operating system, Twister OS, on my Pi 4 8 gig. Uh, and I wanted to show you config.txt. It's definitely something you'll need to get used to on the Raspberry Pi at some point. Now, if I go into folders and I look for the config.txt, so it's in my file system, I can go to boot and there'll be a file here, config.txt. So I can access that and you can see what the settings are. And this is like a BIOS on a PC. Uh, so it's kind of this, the, the settings it uses before it boots the operating system. So you can see most things have got hashes, so most things aren't actually enabled. But if you delete the hash, then it will enable that feature. Uh, so something that is enabled would be disable underscore overscan equals one. Now what that's doing is it's getting rid of the black border. The Pi often will put a black border around the screen just so you can see all everything that is on the screen. Some monitors, uh, it doesn't format correctly. Just so you get all the operating system showing on the screen, they put an overscan on. But disabling the overscan means that it goes bang up to the edges. Uh, and you can see on most monitors, disable underscore overscan will be the setting to have on. Now I mentioned before about 4K being terrible on the Pi 4 uh, and so many operating systems when you start them up for the first time will select 4K. So if we want to adjust that, uh, there's a setting we can put in config.txt to make it boot up in 1080 or below by default. But I can't do it in here because watch what happens if I try and change something. So if I try and put a hash in here, so that would get rid of that line and I'd have a black border around my screen. If I now try and exit, and then hit save, it won't let me. So permissions denied because this is the operating system I'm running so it doesn't let me change it. Now there is a way around this and it's with the terminal. Now if you use Linux, you will end up using the terminal at some point. Uh, so if I call up the terminal and I need to type in sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text. So what that does is it allows us to change it. So if we go down here, uh, if I was to put that hash in this time, you can see that it's changed there, and I can hit Control X and yes, and enter to save that. Now I don't actually want to save that because uh, I like the way that it is at the moment, so I'm gonna go back in and uh, I'm gonna delete that hash. And if I go down to the bottom, just to show you the overclock settings that I use on this operating system. Obviously overclock at your own risk, although that said, I've overclocked loads of my pies in loads of videos uh, even without cooling and what the Pi tends to do is it throttles itself back so if it starts to get beyond a certain temperature uh, it will lower the CPU frequency it won't work as fast uh, until it cools down and then it will go back up again so it's not very risky but obviously if it's your only Pi overclock at your own risk so these are good settings for my Pi 4 8 gig uh, so arm frequency equals 2147. The Pi is generally 1500 megahertz, um, but this runs it at 2147. So it's a considerable overclock uh, and it definitely results in a much faster operating system. The GPU frequency, I often don't change actually, um, but this is raising it up slightly to give a better graphics performance. And the over voltage equals eight is required for the overclock. So as you're basically using more power uh, and running the processor faster, it needs a bit more power. So over voltage equals eight is increasing the amount of power it, it, it allows the Pi to have. If you use it too low, then uh, it often won't boot. So as you raise the settings, you're, you're increasing that to match. Anyway, let's come out of this uh, because say for instance, I wanted to change the config.txt on another operating system. 
So say I'd just written an operating system to an SD card uh, and it's Ubuntu Mate is on this. Uh, if I pop it into a card reader and uh, pop it into, I'm gonna plug it into the USB 2 socket. Remember what I said about too many things plugged into USB 3. It'd probably be right with an SD card in a reader, but just for safety. And I don't, I'm not worried about speed on this because I'm not accessing very much. So let's go into files. And you can see here, there's a couple of things here which have got eject symbols. So the operating system doesn't have an eject because you can't eject it while you're running an operating system, but system boot and writable does. So if I click on system boot and I look for that config.txt again, what you often find in different operating systems, the config.txt can be in different folders. And the good way about doing it this way is you don't have to work out where it is. You just have to look through the folders, find config.txt and you can open it up. Now, because this is Ubuntu Mate, this is a different operating system that I'm accessing through Twister OS, or it could be Raspberry Pi OS uh, that I would be using. Uh, I can now change anything in here and I can actually save it and it will work. So I'm gonna add that line that forces 1080 because say for instance, I've just written Ubuntu Mate to this SD card and I wanna start it up on my 4K TV. If I start it up as is, it will be incredibly slow. It will run at 4K and the actual initial setup will take ages. So let's just make it start at 1080. So the line I need is HDMI underscore ignore underscore EDID equals zero XA five four zeros eight zero. So now I can save that, saving the knowledge that it will only boot as high up as 1920 by 1080. If you decide you want to use it in 4K on a 4K TV, you can do that. So let's hit save and replace. So now if I was to close that down and then open it up again, you'll see that that line HDMI ignore is present. So we know that it's saved. Okay, so now I'm back in Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, the sort of standard operating system for the Pi. And uh, I wanted to show Raspi config, uh, which is a bit like config.txt in the way that it deals with lots of settings and things. Uh, but if we do sudo raspi-config in terminal and press return, you can see we've got various different options here. So system options, you can see there's options for changing the audio between the HDMI and the three and a half mil plug. We can change our password, we can do various things in here. Uh, we've got display options here, performance options, although the overclock doesn't work on a Pi 4. And then we've got things like advanced options and this allows us to update the bootloader. So you wanna be using the latest bootloader. If you happen to get a Pi 4 um, that has an older bootloader, it won't support USB boot because that got added at a later date. So uh, you can update it within Raspi config and you can also update Raspi config within this as well. So let's close that down. Getting apps and games, it's easy on Raspberry Pi OS because it has an app store in it. So we go into preferences and add remove software, but it's not the best experience and it's not the easiest thing to find. Uh, and you'll do a search for something and you'll get a load of results that don't really seem to apply. But uh, pretty much everything you'll find in here will work because it's curated just for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and so it is definitely worth having. Um, but something I also think is worth having uh, is PyKiss and PyApps. So if I go to System Tools uh, and go to PyKiss, this is something you install separately. I've got another video on PyKiss on how to install it and kind of goes through uh, you know, various different bits and try a few things out. So say for instance games, uh, something you wouldn't normally be able to get on the Pi 4, GTA 3, Vice City. Uh, we've got uh, Half-Life on there as well. All sorts of great things in here. Emulation is brilliant on PyKiss. So we have uh, emulators for Wii and GameCube. We've got Mega Drive. Uh, we've got uh, PSP as well, PlayStation 1. So they're all installable through PyKiss and it makes the whole process super easy. So let's quit out of that because we also have PyApps as well. Uh, so if we go to Accessories and PyApps, so both of these don't come installed. You have to install them, but I have videos on them separately. Uh, but say, for instance, you wanted multimedia, you can go into multimedia and all of these things that come up, you just click on them and click install. Uh, and there's loads of great things that wouldn't ordinarily be on the Pi uh, that aren't normally supported. And uh, you can install them very, very simply through this. So on a Pi Zero, I always use the Puffin browser because no other browser seems to work very well at all on it because it's such a, a low powered device. Um, but uh, yeah, Puffin can be installed uh, and you can also check information to see 
what sort of thing it does, and this is regularly updated, as is PyKiss as well. Now, one of the great experiences of having a Raspberry Pi is being able to install different operating systems and play around with things, and uh, certainly some of the 64-bit operating systems are great for certain things. I use Ubuntu for uh, downloading torrents and also unzipping large files. I tend to find that it works better. As a 64-bit operating system, it tends to handle files better. But what you'll notice if you go in the App Store and a lot of these other alternative operating systems is that they won't allow you to install apps to the Raspberry Pi because the apps are mostly designed for x64 and x86, so a sort of laptop or desktop processor. Things are changing, uh, and my new MacBook has got an M1 processor in it, uh, which is based on ARM, uh, just like the Pi. Uh, and things like Pi Apps and Pi Kiss obviously help that situation. Uh, and also Twister OS helps because it allows you to play Windows apps and games within Linux. It also comes with loads of pre-installed software as well, and loads of themes which I really like. So have a look at my video on Twister OS if you want to see uh, my favorite operating system on the Pi. I think it's a really good idea to have uh, as many SD cards or USB sticks as you can so that you can experiment with operating systems. But if you only have one, uh, I've got an SD card in here. Let's start it up. So this is PinOS, uh, which has multiple operating systems on it. You can see here Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, Ubuntu Mate, Recallbox, so a game system, Lineage OS, which is Android, Twister OS and Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. So if I was to click on Twister OS and boot, it will boot into that operating system. But these can all be on one SD card, USB stick, SSD drive, uh, and you've just got everything together. So if I click on files here, you can see down the left-hand side, uh, we've got loads and loads of partitions, and these are all the other operating systems. So I can go into the boot folder and access various different things of another operating system from here. You kind of work, got to work out which one's which. Obviously, the recall box is very easy to work out. And in fact, the share folder is there. So we can put ROMs in there to add the games to recall box if we want to. There's also another multi-boot operating system, and that's called Berry Boot. So if I do a search for Berry Boot Lee PSP video, because I have done loads of videos on Berry Boot. Uh, and you can even convert images yourself for Berry Boot. And uh, there's also a Berry server where there's uh, another place you can download more operating systems. But there are also loads within PinOS. So I'm not saying one is better than the other. They are both excellent. Speaking of excellent, uh, the comment section on my video. If you get stuck, if you've got a new Raspberry Pi and you've got a question, pop it in either a relevant video, or if that video's been out a while, then obviously people aren't going through the comment section as much. So just put it on the latest video or a Pi News video. They probably get the most views from me. Uh, and you'll generally find if I can't answer it, someone else will probably answer it. Uh, the Raspberry Pi community is excellent and overwhelmingly positive. Uh, you know, for a comment section on YouTube, I find that the majority of my comments are very helpful, very supportive, very positive and it's a great community to be part of. Uh, I've had a really good year on YouTube. Uh, I've just had this through, uh, and it says I've had 6.5 million views, which I'm really impressed with. My top video is not a Raspberry Pi video, which is interesting. Um, I have also had 10,626 comments this year, and I do try and read them all, do try and answer them all, because I get loads back from it. So uh, I often get great information and sources for my videos and also just especially things being fixed and things like that in the Pi, uh, it is very helpful. So anyway, I hope this all helps. Uh, if you just bought a Raspberry Pi, you have bought the right product. Uh, and if you already had a Raspberry Pi, hope you learned something new. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.